after the rapture, basically the rapture takes up every single person who serves God. Every single person. Now, except for the 144,000. The 144,000 are left behind. Okay? But after the rapture, God pours out his wrath on the inhabitants of the earth. And there's no Christians left except for the 144,000 who have the seal of God on their forehead. Now, those 144,000, two of them are the two witnesses. And they are systematically martyred and put to death over a period of 1,260 days. So, starting from the rapture, there's 144,000 with the seal of God on their forehead. God begins pouring out his wrath on the earth. And at the end of the 1,260 days, there's only two left. The two witnesses. And the people, the inhabitants of the earth, have murdered the, all 143,998. Leaving only two, which is the two witnesses. Then, on that very last day, exactly 1,260 days. Now, that's one, one thing that you can be sure of. God is specific in that number. Um, if God had said three and a half years, then you could add plus or minus a day or two, or even a week. But God specifically says 1,260 days. At that point, the two witnesses are put to death, and then three and a half days later, they raise from the dead. Now, here we go. So I'm going to show you something. From the point, there's going to be a certain point where you're better off dead. Okay? Everybody is better off dead. In other words, Revelation chapter 9 this is after the rapture. God is pouring out his wrath on the inhabitants of the earth. And one way he does it is he releases... Um, he releases uh, locusts with the sting of a scorpion. And the Bible says that these locusts are not given power to kill the people, but only to torture them for five months... And the agony they suffer is like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes a man. During those days, men will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. <clears throat> so, the point is... Now, where we are right now, uh, in April, it's the end of April, it's April 27, 2017... You know, we got Kim Jong-un threatening thermo, uh, thermonuclear war. We got Iran uh, basically harassing American ships in the, in, in, the, in, in the Persian Gulf. We got Antifa here in the United States that hates Donald Trump and Christianity. The end days, we're in the end days, and it, it turns out that it's everybody against Christians and Jews, basically. If you're an atheist, you're going to hate the Christians. If you're a Muslim, you're going to hate the Christians. If you're a Hindu, you're going to hate the Christians and the Jews. So basically, they're going to try to eradicate Christianity from the face of the earth. And when they do, God has a surprise for them. Because when they do finally get their goal and all of God's people are taken out, He's going to pour out his wrath on them. And so what I'm saying is, don't worry who wins World War III. If Kim Jong-un survives World War III, good. Good. You know why? Because he has the wrath of God coming to him. You know why? Because his father and his grandfather and he himself have persecuted Christians and shed the blood of God's prophets and saints. So I can guarantee you one thing. When World War III happens... Kim Jong-un is going to survive, and Kim Jong-un is going to be around to experience 
A locust with the sting of a scorpion. Same with Obama. Okay, same with all those wicked Muslims, all those ISIS people. Listen, I pray they survive. I pray they live long enough for God to just pour out his wrath on them. And that's what the Bible says he's going to do. So from, from, from the point that there's thermonuclear war, the Bible even says um, that, uh, that in Revelation chapter 3 verse 10, it says since you have been, uh, something like since you've been faithful and you've obeyed me, I'll spare you from the hour of trial that's going to come upon the whole world. That's God's mercy on those Christians. They die young. They die early. They die in the first strike in the thermonuclear war. So they don't have to experience, you know, the end days. They're blessed. And so I'm going to just say starting like right now, if you die right now, you're actually better off than if you live, the, especially when, when thermonuclear war, when this... We see it escalating right now, and I'm not sure how, how many more days or weeks it's going to be. And it might cool down again. That's what's been driving me crazy. It always seems like it's about to happen, and then all of a sudden there's a time of like cooling down, and nothing happens. The first time it escalated, really, really heavily escalated, was right before the elections in 2016. It looked like, boy, we're heading for war. And then it cooled down again. So now uh, it's heating up again. It's been heating up all of April. And uh, if it doesn't start cooling back down, then guess what? We are headed for thermonuclear war. And at the point of uh, thermonuclear war, that's the sixth seal of Revelation. That's Babylon, the Great Falls. At that point, after that, the mark of the beast is going to come out. There's going to be a great falling away, and then the number is going to be complete of those who are to be put to death for their faith. And then after that number is complete, God's going to take out all his Christians. And he's going to start pouring out his wrath on the earth, and the only people left behind are going to be those guys with the seal of God on their forehead who walk in supernatural protection. The wrath of God does not affect them. And you can find that in Revelation chapter 9. Because the... Uh, locusts with the sting of the scorpion are commanded to attack all the people on all the face of the earth except for those who have the seal of God on their forehead. That means all those lukewarm, disobedient Christians who are left behind and thought, oh, I'll just wait for the rapture and once I'm left behind then I'll start serving God the way I should. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, you're dumb. And if you hear people teaching that you can still get saved after the rapture, really, they're the wolves who, who would not spare the flock. In other words, by their teaching, if you believe their teaching, you'll end up in hell and go experiencing the wrath of God in this world. So that's why it says they're wolves in sheep clothing and they will not spare the flock. The flock under them gets destroyed and left behind. Are you kidding me? Anyway, praise God. Jesus is Lord. Time's running out. Get your heart right with God. <laughs> Amen.